The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at how not to measure your blood pressure at home, or in other words, how to do it right. Now, this topic came up because a couple of weeks ago, I saw a patient of mine come in with some blood pressure readings that he'd taken at home. He brought in an extensive list, very nice and meticulously taken. But immediately as I started perusing the numbers that he showed me, they didn't make any sense at all. Uh, one day the blood pressure, some of them were low, then the other half were really high, then there was a few scattered in the middle. The, the plot of the blood pressure just didn't make any sense at all. If I was to use a metaphor of uh, somebody's body weight, it'd be like somebody bringing in uh, a series of weights and one day they weigh 100 pounds and then the next day they're 200 pounds and the day after that they're 98 pounds. It basically just all over the place. It, it didn't make any rational sense at all. So what I invited him to do was to bring in the blood pressure machine that he was utilizing at home so that I could check it out. And I found this exercise very fruitful over the years in many patients where their home readings either uh, don't gel with the readings they're getting in clinic or the readings that they're telling me just don't make sense within the, the data points that they're providing themselves. So what I've found over time is that most often, occasionally it's the machine at fault. So don't get me wrong, there are some people that are using antique machines that came from the last world war or something that should be thrown out. Um, but most of the time, I find that the errors in people's home blood pressure readings are actually not the fault of the machine, but operator error. So in other words, they're not using the machines appropriately, so they're getting bogus, ridiculous results. So uh, what I'm gonna demonstrate first off is what we're trying to achieve by measuring the blood pressure. Uh, so basically, this is my arm here. In here is running along here, there's a large bore artery called the brachial artery that uh, runs along my bicep here and comes out here around the elbow. So we're trying to exploit the proximity of the brachial artery to the surface of the skin here to take the, um, not so much the pulse, but the, the blood pressure, but you can also do your pulse from there as well. Um, and it's also pretty close to my heart. So the first thing is traditionally, you usually do it on the left arm. And that's because the left side is slightly closer to the output from your heart. Theoretically though, I often find it doesn't make that much difference which arm you do it on because I've, I've done it many times with both arms and they're usually pretty much identical. But anyway, if you're trying to be a traditionalist, it would be the left arm that you're trying to do it on. The next thing is it should be at heart level. So you should have the arm um, not suspended in the ear with muscle tension, but relaxing on a table or some kind of hard surface to permit the arm to relax as, as the blood is flowing through. And the reason we're able to take a blood pressure from the brachial artery is unlike the, the plumbing and pipes in your house, which are rigid um, uh, conduits, the arteries are actually flexible. They literally can dilate and contract. So when the heart squeezes, it sends a pressure wave through the artery and that bounce is what we're measuring in the aperture of the uh, artery. So there's a constant waxing and waning. And that's what we're measuring as the the, the systolic clap, that's the, the largest amplitude. And then when the heart's relaxing in diastolic, uh, the constriction then of the, of the propagation of the wave, that's what we're measuring as the diastolic. So with these, with these uh, electronic devices for home, you don't actually have to listen with a stethoscope yourself, the machine does it. But what you have to realize is when you see your doctor doing it, you'll see that they use the, the diaphragm of the stethoscope arm and arm when they're measuring. What you have to realize is that these cuffs also have in a belt or a diaphragm as well. If you feel around to the origin of, of the holes, you'll feel that there's like a disc in there. That is the machine equivalent of this. So what you're trying to do is to get that in the same position that you would see your doctor putting his stethoscope or, or nurse putting on your brachial artery, so somewhere down here. You don't want it up here because there's muscle intervening in the waist, so it's going to um, decrease the amplitude or make it more difficult to hear uh, what you're listening for. 
So the f when my guy came into the office with his uh, machine, the first thing I noticed is that he, first he put the cuff on backwards. So instead of putting it on the appropriate way, he put it on like this with the, with the holes basically at the back. So obviously that's gonna give you a total bogus reading because there's no brachial artery in the back there. Then he did it again for me and he did it upside down that time. So up here, this is supposed to be down here. Now, another thing I want you to realize is if you put your fingers there yourself, you can, just like you can feel your pulse in your neck, you can feel the pulse there. That is where you want the, um, the bell or diaphragm to be um, ad adhering to. That is where you want to be getting the numbers from. So again, demonstrating with this little cuff from an automated machine, as you can see here, I have it pressed up against where my brachial artery is here. So the little diaphragm in here or bell is right here and it's right over the artery. So as my heart is pushing the, the flow out, I'm picking up, tapping the blood pressure right here. The next, so other than putting the cuff on backwards or upside down, the other common mistake I see is that people actually slide it on correct. It's in the right position. But when they go to tighten this part here, to tighten the sleeve, to, to adhere the Velcro, sometimes it shifts in position. So you see now how it's not here anymore? By me pulling here, it's pulled it all the way over here. So it's migrated it. The simple fix for that is to observe after you put the, tighten the cuff, has it shifted? And if it has, just pull it back to where you, where you felt the pulse. That's where you want it to be. So, um, it's pretty simple once once you once you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And um, if you're if you're not sure, um, most pharmacies today carry automated machines that are pretty dummy proof. Uh, that are a very easy way to to get your blood pressure. Um, the other thing is if you're not sure that your machine itself needs calibrating. You can take that to one of those stores and do a cross check or take it to your, your family doctor's office, which is what I usually encourage my own patients to do, and then get them to do a face off so they take it with their machine compared to what your machine does and see if the two agree within about five points. And last but not least, remember that when you're measuring your blood pressure with a blood pressure cuff, wearing a whole bundle of clothes is like trying to listen to your heartbeat with your hands covering your ears. Ideally, the cuff should be on bare skin. A very light clothing like silk or very thin cotton is still possible for the receptor to pick up the pulse, but try to make this to a minimum unless absolutely necessary for purposes of modesty or whatever. Um, the, the key take home message um, with taking home blood pressure readings is that there is no point taking them it, basically don't do it at all if you're not going to do it right. There's no point getting numbers that are, are useless. You could as well not be doing it at all. So that is how to do and not to do home blood pressure readings with an automated uh, machine. Thank you for watching and uh, in the next upload I'll send, you, send along some more medical secrets. Uh, thank you for watching and have a terrific rest of your week. Oh, yeah! Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.